Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to look at the process for doing a hypothesis test for a sample mean if we know the standard deviation of the population or our sigma is known. So let's just review the steps for hypothesis testing in general and fill in the gaps for how are we going to do this for a mean if sigma is known. So the first step is always to write a null and alternative hypothesis. Remember that your null hypothesis needs to be h0 given mu equals whatever value is the status quo. And then your alternative hypothesis or ha will be a comparison of mu to that number based on your claim. So is mu greater than that number, less than that number, or just not equal to? Once you've written those hypothesis statements, then you're going to draw a picture of your model. In this case, it's going to be a normal model, and you're going to shade your rejection region based on that alternative hypothesis. So a left one-sided, a right one-sided, or a two-sided. After you have found your rejection region and shaded that in, you're going to calculate your test statistic. So in this case, our test statistic is going to be Z star. And that is going to be calculated by taking X bar, or the mean of the sample you're working with, minus mu, so that's going to be the value that you have in your null hypothesis, divided by sigma over the square root of n. Or remember that sigma over square root n is called the standard error of your distribution for sample means. So we're gonna calculate that test statistic and then compare it to our rejection region. So if the test statistic falls into the rejection region, then you would reject the null hypothesis. If it falls outside the rejection region, then we would fail to reject that null hypothesis. Remember here that when we state our conclusion about the claim, we are never able to talk about the alternative hypothesis. All we can do is say that we can reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So let's see this process in action with an example. So let's say that the mean throwing distance of a football for Marco, a high school freshman quarterback, is 40 yards. The population standard deviation is 2 yards. So let's say that the team coach tells a Marco to adjust his grip to get more distance. The coach then records the distance for 20 throws. For those 20 throws, a Marco's mean distance was 42 yards. The coach thought that the different grip helped Marco throw farther than 40 yards. Let's conduct a hypothesis test using a significance level of 0.05 to test the coach's claim. So first thing that we want to do is we want to write a set of hypothesis statements. So we are talking here about a mean throwing distance. So both of our hypothesis statements are going to be about mu. So we are comparing our mu to the status quo of 40 yards. Here the coach thinks that the different grip help Marco throw farther. So farther would mean we are testing the claim that mu is greater than 40. So that means for us that we are working with a one-sided hypothesis test here. And in fact, it's going to be a one-sided right tailed hypothesis. All right, let's find our rejection region. With an alpha of 0.05, or an area in our rejection region of 0.05, that's going to give us a z critical value, either just memorizing these or using inverse normal, that's going to give us a z critical of 1.65. So our rejection region is anything above a z-score of 1.65. So now what we want to do is we want to calculate the test statistic. So the statistic or the z-score based upon this sample of 20 throws that had a mean of 42 yards. 
So our test statistic will be x bar minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of n. In this case, that will be our x bar of 42 minus our mu of 40 over sigma, our standard deviation was two yards divided by the square root of the number in our sample, which was 20. Using your calculator to calculate that, we get a Z star of 4.47, or a Z score for a mean of 42 of 4.47. So once we have that test statistic, we want to see, does that fall into our rejection region? or does it fall below the rejection region? So 4.47, if this score right here is our Z critical of 1.65, 4.47 would be way, way, way out here. So that is definitely in our rejection region. So our decision is going to be to reject our null hypothesis. Okay. So once we've made that decision, we need to state our kind of our decision in the context of the problem. And there's kind of a script for this. It kind of goes the same way each time. So we would say there, we're either going to say there is sufficient evidence to reject or there is not. Since we are rejecting, we're going to say there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis that the mean throwing distance is 40 yards. So, there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis that the mean throwing distance is still 40 yards. Now, it is up to the reader to understand that that means that we can probably support the claim that the mean distance of 42 yards is, in fact, not a fluke. It is, in fact, probably the case that the coach's adjustment of the grip did help the Marco increase his mean throwing distance. But in statistics, we never ever accept an alternative hypothesis. All we can do is reject the null hypothesis that the mean throwing distance is still 40 yards. All right, guys, that's it for this video on hypothesis testing with a known standard deviation. For more examples, catch us in our next videos.